So how can we start to think about what it means to exist in a world with something much, much smarter than you? What's, what's a good thought experiment that you've relied on to try to build up intuition about what happens here? Uh, I have been struggling for years to convey this intuition. Um, the, the most success I've had so far is, well, imagine that the humans are running at very high speeds compared to very slow aliens. So just focusing on the speed part of it, that helps you get the right kind of intuition. Forget the intelligence, just the speed. Because people understand the power gap of time. They understand that today we have technology that was not around 1,000 years ago and that this is a big power gap and that it is bigger than... Okay, so like, what does smart mean? What When you ask somebody to imagine something that's more intelligent, what does that word mean to them, given the cultural associations that that person brings to that word? For a lot of people, they will think of like, well, it, it sounds like a super chess player that went to double college. And, you know, it's, it's, and because we're talking about the definitions of words here, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're wrong. It means that the word is not communicating what I wanted to communicate. Um, so the, the, the thing I want to communicate is the sort of difference that separates humans from chimpanzees. But that gap is so large that you like ask people to be like, well, human, chimpanzee, go another step along that interval of around the same length and people's minds just go blank. Like, how do you even do that? So I can, and we can, and I can try to like break it down and consider what it would mean to send a schematic for an air conditioner 1,000 years back in time. <laughs> yeah. Now, I think that there is a sense in which you could redefine the word magic to refer to this sort of thing. And what do I mean by this new technical definition of the word magic? I mean that if you send a schematic for the air conditioner back in time, they can see exactly what you're telling them to do. Mm -hmm. But having built this thing, they do not understand how it would output cold air. Because the air conditioner design uses the relation between temperature and pressure. Mm -hmm. And this is not a law of reality that they know about. They do not know that when you compress something, when you, com when you compress air or like coolant, it gets hotter and you can then like transfer heat from it to room temperature air and then expand it again and now it's colder. And then you can like transfer heat to that and generate cold air to blow. They don't know about any of that. They're looking at a design and they don't see how the design out outputs cold air it uses aspects of reality that they have not learned. So magic in this sense is I can tell you exactly what I'm going to do. And even knowing exactly what I'm going to do, you can't see how I got the results that I got. That's a really nice example. But is it possible to linger on this defense, is it possible to have AGI systems that help you make sense of that schematic? Weaker AGI systems. Do you trust them? Fundamental part of building up AGI is this question. Can you trust the output of a system? Can you tell if it's lying? I think that's going to be, the smarter the thing gets, the more important that question becomes. Can, is it lying? But I guess that's a really hard question. Is GPT lying to you? Even now, GPT-4, is it lying to you? Is it using an invalid argument? Is it persuading you via the kind of process that could persuade you of false things as well as true things? Because the, the basic paradigm of machine learning that we are presently operating under is that you can have the loss function, but only for things you can evaluate. If what you're evaluating is human thumbs up versus human thumbs down, you learn how to make the human press thumbs up. That doesn't mean that you're making the human press thumbs up using the kind of rule that the human thinks is, that human wants to be the case for what they press thumbs up on. You know, maybe you're just learning to fool the human. That's so fascinating and terrifying, the question of lying. On the present paradigm, what you can verify is what you get more of. If you can't verify it, you can't ask the AI for it. Because you can't train it to do things that you cannot verify. Now, this is not an absolute law, but it's like the basic 
dilemma here. Like maybe you like maybe you can verify it for simple cases and then scale it up without retraining it somehow. Like by do by like chain of thought by like making the chains of thought longer or something, and like get more powerful stuff that you can't verify, but which is generalized from the simpler stuff that did verify. And then the question is, did the alignment generalize along with the capabilities? But like that's the that's the basic dilemma on this whole paradigm of artificial intelligence. It's such a difficult problem. It seems like a it seems like a problem of trying to understand the human mind better than the AI understands it. Otherwise, it has magic. That is, it is you know the same way that if you are dealing with something smarter than you, then the same way that one thousand years earlier they didn't know about the temperature pressure relation, it knows all kinds of stuff going on inside your own mind of which you yourself are unaware. And it can like output something that's going to end up persuading you of a thing, and or and you could like see exactly what it did and still not know why that worked. 